okay so we will continue with the next part of this standard which is a slightly more important part which pertains to diluted eps now what is diluted eps diluted eps refers to the worst possible eps that an entity can earn considering that even the potentially convertible e equity shares or potential equity shares are also converted first of all before we understand diluted eps we should understand what is meant by a potential share a potential share as the name goes refers to a share which has a potential to become equity shares so basic eps is calculated based on actual shares in case of diluted eps well we definitely consider the actual shares but along with the actual shares we also take the potential shares now potential shares are the shares like convertible debentures like convertible preference shares which are not currently or at least at the start of the year are not converted into the equity shares however they do have the potential to be converted into equity shares so what if they are converted so for example let us say you have a company which has a pat which is after deducting preference dividend after deducting uh, let us say uh, uh, let's say interest etc so this is pat which is after any preference dividend or interest as a case maybe let us say this is 1 lakh rupees and the company has shares these are ordinary equity shares which are 10000 and as a result the basic eps for this company is let us say rupees 10 <coughs> now when we look at diluted eps we also have to consider potential shares so let us say there are there are potential shares which is 11% convertible preference shares which are of the value rupees 1 lakh these are convertible one preference share will convert into let us say 10 equity shares and let us say the tax rate is given to you as 30% now whether the preference shares are classified as equity or liability in the books of accounts income tax does not give you deduction for preference dividend income tax still follows the law and as per law preference shares are owners and hence you might treat it as finance cost but income tax believes that the payment to preference shares is actually like an appropriation and hence tax deduction is not given in income tax okay so now when we look at when we look at your diluted eps your diluted eps is the eps that is calculated if the preference shares are converted so for example let us say the face value of these preference shares is rupees 100 each when we look at 1 lakh 1 lakh is after deducting preference dividend and 10000 are pure equity shares now if you look at preference shares how many preference shares are there probably you have 1000 preference shares of rupees 100 each now if these preference shares are converted if these preference shares are converted then how many equity shares will be issued well if these preference shares are converted against the 1000 preference shares you will issue 1000 into 10 that is 10000 equity shares acha that will be your that will be your effect now the question is when will these preference shares be converted well in terms of when these preference shares will be converted we will assume that they will be converted from the start of the year they will be converted of the start of the year provided they were existing on the start of the year or if they were not existing on the start of the year that is they were issued during the year then you can convert it earlier from the date of their issue from the start of the year or date of issue as a case may be so you will take either the start of the year or the date of issue whichever is earlier or whichever is rather later sorry whichever is later so if your preference shares were issued on 30th september and the start of the year is 1st of april the earliest date that these preference shares can actually be converted is hypothetically were issued on the very next instant they get converted okay so if they are actually converted and let's say these preference shares were outstanding for the entire year let us say they get converted into equity shares then will you still have to pay preference dividend no which means in the numerator you will end up saving some preference dividend as well which is 11% so over here if we go to see the diluted eps will be 1 lakh plus let us say 11% that is 11000 you will add divided by let us say 20000 and as a result your diluted eps will be 1 lakh 11000 divided by 20000 which is 5.55 is this lower than the basic eps well yes and hence this is called as a diluted eps sir have we considered any tax savings no you have not because uh, over here preference shares 
do not give a separate tax deduction however if instead of preferences if this was debentures or if these were bonds all else remaining constant then if these bonds are convertible bonds and if they get converted into equity shares again from the start of the year then in the denominator you will take the number of shares to be added at the same time you will take the interest saved but if the interest is saved let us say hypothetically these debentures were converted at the start of the year now if these debentures were converted at the start of the year you will not pay interest on these debentures well if you are not going to pay interest on these debentures then interest is going to be saved but well if interest is saved your profit before tax will increase and if the profit before tax will increase then your income tax will also change so over here let us say your profit before tax was let's say an x amount and that profit before tax was calculated after deducting interest in the year the debentures were not converted and hence interest was paid and which was allowed as a deduction but hypothetically if you are assuming that these debentures were converted from the start of the year then there would be no interest and as a result you will deduct the interest or you will add back the interest already deducted so you are going to add back perfect but if you add back the interest the profit before tax will also increase and if the profit before tax increases the tax will also increase so as a result yes you will save interest of 11,000 perfect but on this saving of 11,000 you will also have to ensure that your taxable profit increases and hence you will have to pay tax Achha, the taxable profit se increase hoega? well it will increase by 11,000 and if the tax rate is given to you as 30 percent that means yes you will save 11,000 of interest however since a profit increases by 11,000 you will have to pay further tax as 11,000 into 30 percent as well and as a result your real savings would be uh, 1 lakh plus one can say 11,000 into 1 minus t so this is 11,000 common into 1 minus t so this is 7,700 and as a result this will be upon 20,000 and it will be a slightly different EPS number so this is 5.385 let us say okay so when you're trying to calculate the diluted EPS then in the numerator you will add back the cost savings after considering all the possible impacts over here you have just considered the interest and the corresponding tax savings but it is very much possible that there may be other items as well for example there may be an md's remuneration and md's remuneration is the percentage of profit now currently based on whatever profit you have paid let's say five percent as md's remuneration however hypothetically if you were to assume that that uh, uh, let us say the debentures were to convert in which case interest will not be deducted as an expense in which case interest is added back if, but if interest is added back then your base for calculating md's remuneration also increases and as a result your md's remuneration will also increase so that will result in an additional cost but if md's remuneration increases that will also result in a higher tax savings so you will also have to consider the tax savings on md's remuneration so that will be a full impact you will not just consider the direct impact you will consider all the direct as well as indirect impacts that will result out of the conversion okay now there is also one more case let us say there are uh, uh, there is a 19 percent all else remaining constant let us say this is not 11 percent this is 19 percent will your solution remain the same well uh, instead of 11 percent over here we will take 19 so instead of 11,000 into 1 minus t this will probably be 19,000 into 1 minus t okay that is fine and let us say the conversion ratio over here instead of 1 is to 10 is let us say is 1 is to 1 which means one preference share gets converted into one equity share so what this will happen is in the denominator this will be 1000 preference shares getting converted into 1000 equity shares and hence this will be 11,000 okay so what will happen is 19,000 into 1 minus t so this is let's say 19,000 into 0.7 will be 13,300 this is 13,300 upon 11,000 so here your diluted EPS will change it will become 1 lakh plus 13,300 
is one lakh thirteen thousand three hundred divided by eleven thousand, which is ten point three. Okay, and you will proceed. Now this is where students kind of ignore what this term stands for. This term stands for diluted EPS, and the word diluted has a single meaning. It does not have. It does not say potential EPS. Potential EPS means EPS if the potential shares were converted blanket blindly. However, here this is diluted EPS, which effectively means that if these potential equity shares are converted into actual equity shares. you will try to calculate the eps but you will take this as a diluted eps only if it dilutes your eps what do you mean by the words that it dilutes your eps dilutes means it reduces when we like when we say dilution dilution has a single meaning this is reduction so like when we say a promoter dilutes his stake it means a promoter reduces his stake a promoter increasing his stake is not called as stake dilution in a similar way the words diluted eps has a single meaning that is a eps which is lower then let us say the basic eps over here which means 10.3 is actually anti dilutive it is not a diluted eps it is eps which is favorable which means if the conversion happens the investors will have a higher eps if the conversion happens so over here prudence and conservatism says that in case you have the worst possible picture please showcase and present it to the investor however if you have a positive picture let the conversion actually happen we don't assume a conversion in such a case we say that let the conversion happen in such a case your diluted eps will be the same as a basic eps that is 10 rupees however if it was the earlier cases where the uh, let's say interest rate was 11% in such a case your eps falls and if the eps falls we want to showcase the best possible the worst possible picture that if if this debentures converted they have not converted as a matter of fact and hence we have shown the basic eps but in the coming year we don't know if your performance remains constant and if all else remaining constant if these potential instruments convert then you are sitting on a potential landmine where your eps can fall and we are we are mentally preparing the shareholders for such an eventuality however if the conversion is actually favorable then we say that let us not raise hopes in the minds of the shareholders let the conversion actually happen and once the conversion will actually happen and if the eps increases so be it that is when they will see let us not raise the hopes right so over here diluted eps means an eps which is lower it cannot be greater than the eps number so this is the worst possible eps uh, okay so for what period will you include the potential shares well for the period they were potential that is from from the period that is the start of the year or the date of issue whichever is later so if the issue happens during the year then from the date the issue happens to to well the end of the year however what if the conversion or redemption happens in the middle of the year well then they become actual shares and hence they go as a part of the basic eps or if they are redeemed they are no longer potential in which case this will be to the date of redemption or conversion as the case may be whichever is earlier this is basically the period for which they remain potential and hence they have to be separately included in calculating the diluted eps okay so considering that we'll read some theory on page number 71 we have discussed about two common potential shares that is convertible preference shares and convertible debentures though there can be other potentially convertible instruments as well like options we'll do sums on that or warrants or even contingent shares that is shares that may be issued contingently or potentially so we will see that as well so let us read this uh point 1 diluted eps well diluted eps is the worst possible eps in case potential equity shares are converted or exercised what are potential shares well potential shares include convertible preference shares convertible debentures options or warrants or contingent shares this is something that you have not done contingent shares which we will do at the end of this chapter third the conversion is assumed to happen at the start of the earliest period reported or the date of issue whichever is later so this is particularly helpful for those instruments which may have been issued during the year acha potential shares will be considered to exist till the end of the year or the date of conversion or redemption whichever is earlier 
So the potential shares will be considered to exist till the end of the year. Okay. Or till the date of potential conversion or redemption. Which is because if they convert, then they are no longer potential. They are actual and they will go as a part of basic EPS. Okay. Then the conversion of potential equity shares should dilute or basically reduce the EPS. In case a potential conversion increases the EPS, these securities are considered to be anti-dilutive and should be ignored. Ajab. You will not sit and rack your brains that will the investors convert, should you convert, that is not something for you to. If there is a potential equity share, you will assume that if the conversion happens, then what? Whether the conversion is likely or unlikely is irrelevant. While calculating potential shares, we should not go into estimating whether the investor will convert the shares or not, or whether the shares are currently convertible or not. Irrespective of the fact they are potential, they should be included. Achha, adjustments for potential shares. Well, adjustments can include for convertible preference shares, you will add back preference dividend. And for convertible debentures, you will add back interest, but here into 1 minus t as well, because interest can result in tax adjustment. In the denominator, you will have shares issued. You will add back the shares issued. Acha note 1. Ideally, convertible instruments are compound financial instruments. And the interest or preference dividend debited to PNL would be the effective interest. Okay. They are compound financial instruments and the interest or preference dividend would be the effective interest. Now, this is something which can be considered if a question involves index 109 and index 33. Most of the questions don't, sir. How will we know that it involves or not? Well, if the question gives you an for a convertible debenture and convertible debentures or preferences are almost always compound financial instruments. So, if the question only gives you the coupon rate. In which case the interest has to be calculated based on face value into the coupon rate only. However, if the question gives you the market rate of interest on similar non-convertible instruments, that is when you can find the liability component and then the liability component into the EIR will give you the effective rate. So the institute can test both of them together, but it has been fairly generous. It has included a couple of problems. However, almost every question that uh, you will see will not give you the market rate of interest of a similar non-convertible instrument, in which case you can't find the liability component separately and hence the defective interest method will not apply. We will do sums on both cases. Ajah. Ideally, convertible instruments are compound financial instruments and the interest or preference dividend debited to the PNL would be the effective interest. Okay. And hence, if you have to add back, you can add back whatever has been deducted. Ajah. So, if you deduct the effective interest, then you add back also the effective interest. Therefore, in case of a potential conversion, the interest to be added back would also be the effective interest only. Ajah, sometimes then this will give rise to a controversy then what will be the tax savings uh, well then you will do a phd in income tax loss that income tax care deduction allow karta. we don't go into that much detailing if interest whatever is interest added back let us say it is effective interest added back then effective interest into one minus t unless the question tells you other way around so the above adjustments for effective interest needs to be done only for market rate of interest on similar non-convertible debentures is given if no such rate is given, we will do adjustment directly based on the coupon rate only, which is there in most of the cases. Aja. Secondly, while calculating the impact on conversion, we should look at all the possible impacts. That is, we should not just look at the interest or preference dividend saved. For example, even a change in MD's remuneration along with the tax impact should be considered. Aja. In certain questions, the institute may also ask you to calculate what is called as incremental EPS. Incremental EPS is the EPS which is linked to the potential instrument. So in the numerator, you will take the cost savings overall upon the additional shares to be issued. So an incremental EPS, if it is asked, will be the EPS on potential equity instruments, which is the net profit, net increase in the earnings on conversion. Basically, this is the cost savings if the conversion were to happen upon the number of shares which you will end up issuing on conversion. Based on that, we have question number 9, 10 and 11. Also, one more thing. What can happen is sometimes the conversion over here may have multiple ratios. So, it may happen that if the conversion happens after one year, then you are going to issue 100 shares. If it happens after two years, then 150 shares. If it happens after three years, then 200 shares. Now, you are stuck. In your inter -C, you never had such a problem. Let us say, if there are multiple conversion ratios given and as of now, no conversion has happened. However, in the future, conversion may happen. Sir, so will we think uh, uh, that 
which of the three to take should you take average no so the standard says you are trying to find the worst possible eps and the worst possible eps would be the lowest possible eps and when will the lowest possible eps happen well when if the maximum number of shares are issued if 200 shares are issued you have already issued the convertible bond money has been received now if the holder waits for three years and then we have to issue 200 shares then your denominator will increase by 200 and hence your eps will be the lowest possible eps so over here we have taken a special case applied in case of all bonds preference shares options everywhere then in case there are multiple conversion ratios we should take the conversion ratio which results in the maximum dilution that is the least possible eps this is usually the ratio which involves issuing the maximum number of shares uh, we have a question number 14 which i guess is dedicated on these lines so we'll probably even discuss that okay so let us go through the cases please okay so let us go to question number nine not a very important question 9 10 11 not very important we'll quickly glance through entity a has in issue 25000 4 percent debentures with a nominal value of 1 rupee 25000 4 percent debentures with a nominal value of 1 rupee okay the debentures are convertible into ordinary shares at the rate of 1 is to 1 at any time until 2019 okay so basically that means they are potential their potential equity shares the entity's management receives a bonus which is one percent of the profit before tax the entity a's results for 2012 showed a profit before tax of rupees 80,000 obviously this must be after deducting managing uh, management's uh, bonus and a profit after tax of 64,000 for simplicity tax rate of 20% is assumed in this example so 80,000 minus 20% will give you 64,000 calculate the earnings that is just the numerator for the purpose of diluted EPS so over here for the diluted EPS you will start with the basic EPS ends so for question number 9 we will start with the net profit after tax which is let us say 64,000 now if the convertible if the convertible loan or debentures get converted then what will happen well you will have to issue shares correct however interest will be saved how much is the interest well 25,000 into 4 percent will come to I guess 1000 rupees so interest worth 1000 will be saved however when interest worth 1000 is saved will that have an impact on tax well yes this will also have an inter impact on tax so you will have interest into 1 minus t it is not a preference share so this is 1000 rupees of interest into 1 minus 0 0.2 and as a result this will be 800 i did the question would have ended over here however the management is supposed to receive a bonus and this bonus is a percentage of it's one percent of profit before tax now because of this conversion because of this potential conversion which you assume from the beginning of the year interest would not be charged and if interest would not be charged your pbt would be higher your pbt would be higher by 1000 not by 1000 into 1 minus t the pbt profit before tax would be higher by 1000 and hence your managing management's bonus will also increase so your management bonus will also increase because the pbt increases pbt increases by 1000 and hence management's bonus also increases by 1000 1000 into 1 percent is the increase in management's bonus but management's bonus is also a deductible expense and as a result if the management's bonus increases there will be some tax saving due to that so this is 1000 into 1 percent into 0.8 which is let us say 8 rupees and hence your earnings or your pact for diluted eps calculation would be 64,792 you will divide it by the equity shares plus the potential shares which has not been given and hence we will not do so this is question number 9 go to question number 10 ABC has 1 lakh or 1 million that is 10 lakhs of rupees 1 ordinary shares 
and one thousand rupees hundred ten percent convertible bonds which are issued at par which means at face value each convertible into 20 ordinary shares on demand all of which have been in issue for the whole of the reporting period so there are some potential shares there are 1000 convertible debentures and each convertible debenture can potentially convert into 20 ordinary shares and hence 1000 into 20 will come to 20000 each convertible debenture can convert into potentially 20 ordinary shares so this is 1000 into 20 and hence this is 20000 now abc share price is 4.5 let it be anything and the earnings for the period are 5 lakh rupees earnings is always after all expenses the tax rate applicable to the entity is 21 percent calculate the earnings per incremental share on conversion of the bonds this is just earnings per incremental share so when you look at question number 10 there are certain convertible bonds Achha, if these convertible bonds are converted then how much will be the interest saved so this is 1 lakh into rupees 100 that is uh, 1000 into rupees 100 that is 1 lakh 1 lakh into 10 percent ideally you should have found the liability component on these bonds and multiplied by the effective rate but you don't have the market rate of interest on similar non-convertibles and hence you can ignore that so this is 1 lakh into 10 percent this is your interest saved but if this interest is saved there will be some tax savings as well so this is minus 0.21 Apart from that, you will not have any managerial remuneration, etc. Over here, nothing is given. Achha, on the 1000 bonds, you will also have to issue shares. That will be 20 shares. So, one can say that, well, you are going to end up saving 1 lakh into 10%. That is rupees 10,000 into 0 0.79 upon 20,000, which means this is going to be rupees. 7900 upon 20,000 which is equal to 7900 upon 20,000 which is rupees 0.395 so for each potential equity share that is for 20,000 instruments you are saving 7900 which means for each instrument you are saving 0.395 okay so that takes care of Question number 10, nothing very important. 11 and 12 are linked to options. So we'll do that, or let's say 12 and 13 are linked to options. We'll do that later. The two important questions that you are going to now study are question 11, important. Question 14, which I guess even came almost in a similar way in the July 21 exams as well. So 11 and 14, both of them are important. If you understand both of them properly, your diluted EPS is sorted. Achha, let us first go to question 11. On 1st of January, shares in issue are 10 lakhs. There are 5% convertible bonds, which are rupees 1 lakh. Terms of conversion involve 120 shares for every rupees 100. 120 shares for every rupees 100. Okay, which means in totality for rupees 1 lakh, this is rupees 1 lakh upon rupees 100 into 120 Ajah. on 31st march on 31st march what is happening is holders of rupees 25000 bonds converted into ordinary shares holders of rupees 25000 bonds so 25 percent of the bond holders converted into ordinary shares the profit for the year ended 31st December is 2 lakh rupees. Achha, you have just been given the words profit. So we don't know whether this is profit before tax, profit after tax, profit before interest, profit after interest. We don't know any of this. In which case, how will you interpret this profit to be? Achha, the word profit unless given otherwise will always include or mean the word net profit. You might see in institutes material this is generally consistently applied there might be certain exceptions but well for solving you will have to take this as a base so the word profit will typically be interpreted to mean net profit so the profit for the year 31st december is given to you as rupees 2 lakhs okay this is for the entire year this must be after tax this must be after interest unless given otherwise you don't even need to write this this is always interpreted to be after tax, after interest as well. 
and the tax rate is 30 percent calculate the basic eps and the diluted eps ignore the need to split the convertible bonds into the liability and equity components Achha, even if this line was not given you would have ignored it because if you don't have the market rate of interest on similar convertible bonds well you can't really find the liability and equity component otherwise on this five percent you can try to find a liability and equity component if the market rate of interest was given as 10 percent then you will say that this is optionally or compulsorily convertible and based on that find the liability and equity but if there is no rate of interest on similar non-convertible instruments it is impossible to find the liability and equity component separately Achha. what i would again strongly recommend is you should pause the video and read this question again because it appears to be too easy to solve but it is not so over here if you want to find let us say the basic eps the basic eps will be rupees 2 lakhs upon 10 lakhs shares you have ordinary shares which are 10 lakhs and your profit is 2 lakhs so your basic eps is fairly easy which is rupees 0 0.2 However, when you look at diluted EPS, you start where the basic EPS ends. So you start at 2 lakhs, but 2 lakhs is after deducting interest. So you will add back interest into 1 minus T, but you also have to add back shares, shares which are potential. However, in this case, you have, let's say, bonds which are having a total value of rupees 1 lakh. Now, these bonds can are equivalent to potentially to potential shares the potential shares are rupees 1 lakh upon rupees 100 into 120 which means these are equivalent to 1 lakh 20 thousand PES PES is potential equity shares Achha, however are these 1 lakh 20 thousand shares remaining potential for the entire year well no because there are certain bonds with a value of rupees 25 thousand which are getting converted into actual equity shares on 31st March which means they will be converted into actual shares and if they are converted into actual shares they will also impact the basic EPS which we have ignored over here we have done this on an overly simplistic basis I said that ye lagta bahut easy itna easy question hai nahi. so if these 25,000 rupees worth of bonds are converted first of all they are converted into how many shares well they are converted into well, rupees 25,000 upon rupees 100 into 120 and hence they will get converted into 25,000 upon 100 into 120 which is they will get converted into 30,000 potential equity shares. Okay, they will get converted into 30,000 potential equity shares and when will they get converted that is 31st March which means these shares are potential only for the first three months because after that they become actual equity shares and they remain actual equity shares for the remaining nine months okay which means your basic EPS calculation is also wrong when you look at your basic EPS you have taken only 10 lakh shares which are there in issue to be a part of basic EPS well fundamentally that is wrong because apart from these 10 lakh shares also you have ended up issuing 30,000 more shares. Achha, these 10 lakh shares are outstanding for the entire year. So this is 10 lakhs into 12 by 12. But there is another 30,000 shares that have been actually issued. And these 30,000 shares have been issued on 1st of April or 31st of March. And they are outstanding for 9 months. And as a result, this will be rupees 2 lakhs upon, let us say, 10 lakhs plus this is I guess 22,500 30,000 into 9 by 12 will be 22,500 and hence this will be 2 lakhs divided by 10 lakh 22,500 which is rupees 0 0.1955 or 0 0.1956 as the case may be you can stop up to even 3 or 2 decimals. Achha, when we look at potential equity shares at the time of diluted EPS calculation we have to look at two impacts we have to look at the numerator impact and the denominator impact in the denominator we are saying that we should separately add potential shares and potential shares are potential for the first three months however in the numerator we have to add back interest and hence if I were to find 
the interest which is attributable the interest which is attributable to these bonds will be rupees 25000 however this 25000 into 10 percent would be charged only for the first three months because after that they are they are converted into actual shares and hence the interest over here would be rupees 2500 into 3 by 12 which comes to rupees 625 so if these shares which are high, which are actually converted on 31st march if they were converted on 1st of january that is the very first day of the year then the 625 interest could have been saved however this interest comes with an attached tax element as well and hence if i were to find the interest into 1 minus t over here if you want you can do that otherwise we will do that in the diluted dps calculation as well so over here the potential equity shares are remaining potential for the first three months and interest during the period when they were potential is 625 you will not take the interest for the entire year because these shares these bonds are actually converted into shares Aja, what about the remaining 75,000 rupees so for the remaining rupees 75,000 you have 75,000 divided by rupees 100 into 120 which will be let us say 90,000 potential equity shares now they have remained potential for the entire year they have not been converted into actual equity shares and they remain potential for the entire 12 months no actual shares have been issued against that and hence this is relatively easier so over here these shares remain potential for the entire year the interest on these shares would be rupees 75,000 into 10 percent into 12 by 12 because these shares have remained potential for the entire year and hence you must have paid the entire year's interest which is rupees 7,500 this is rupees 7,500 and as a result uh, this is not 10% this is 5% better late than never we have detected it so here your interest will be into 5% this is also into 5% things like this remember eat up a lot of your marks conceptually you may be aware but if you end up doing a silly mistake 25,000 into 5% into 3 by 12 which is 312.5 let us say and this is I think 3750 half of this 3750 and hence your total interest total interest would be 3750 plus 312.5 which is 4062.5 tax saving lena which means if I were to calculate the diluted EPS I will start at the net profit which is 2 lakhs now this 2 lakhs is after deducting interest and we have figured out that the interest in totality would be rupees 4062.5 so had these instruments been converted from the beginning of the year or for they would be actual equity shares for the entire period when they were potential then 4062 of interest would be added back however this will result in a tax impact as well so this is into 1 minus 0.3 and the entire term is to be divided so you start it where the basic eps ends and basic eps takes 10 like 22,500 out of which 22,500 is the actual shares and hence on this what we will add is we will add 30,000 shares for the first three months Achha, for the last three months they have already been included in the basic eps for the first three months they were potential and hence they are to be added a lot of students have an argument over here that sir we know that they are now converted and what is the point of showing it as potential remember potential shares or eps is not calculated as on date it is calculated for the period and for the period the shares were potential for the first three months and hence they will be included in this calculation as well so over here this is 30,000 and 90,000 for the entire 12 months they remain potential for the entire 12 months and as a result for the diluted EPS calculation we will have in the numerator 4062.5 into 0.7 plus 2 lakhs so this is 2 lakh 2843.75 upon in the denominator you have 10 lakh 22500 plus 
थर्टी थाउजेंड इंटू थ्री बाई ट्वेल्व सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड नाइन्टी थाउजेंड दिस इज नाइन्टी सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड एज अ रिजल्ट यू विल हैव टू लैख टू थाउजेंड एट फोर्टी थ्री पॉइंट सेवन फाइव डिवाइडेड बाई लेवन लैक्स विच शुड कम टू जीरो पॉइंट This is just a second. Thirty thousand into three by twelve. Thirty thousand into three divided by twelve. This is seven thousand five hundred. Ninety seven thousand five hundred nine eight seven. Then you have ninety thousand m plus, and you have ten twenty two five hundred m plus. This is eleven lakh twenty. So this is. Eleven lakh twenty and two lakh two thousand eight forty three point seven five divided by eleven lakh twenty will be point one eight one one, which is lower than the basic EPS and hence it can be called as diluted. Why we rate this as fairly important is because of these adjustment for this rupees twenty five thousand, which is to be done for the first three months. in the diluted eps and which will be done for the last 6 for the last 9 months in the basic eps so i hope that is clear we go to question number 14 uh, it is an important question and i guess it is also asked in the july 21 exams so let us go to question number 14 mark it as important 12 and 13 are options we we'll do that later on 30th of june 2011 okay the issued share capital of the entity consisted of 15 lakh ordinary shares of rupees 1 each on 1st of october 2011 the entity issued rupees 12 lakh 50 of 8% convertible loan stock for cash at par okay each rupees 100 but remember this is issued on 1st october again the financials we were given on 30th june and then during the year you issued an 8% convertible loan stock for cash at par each rupees 100 nominal value of loan stock may be converted may be converted so it's an optionally convertible instrument may be converted at any time during the years between 2016 to 2019 so one can argue ke sir it is not legally permitted to be converted in the year 11 12 does not really matter when you looking at potential shares you don't look at the legality and whether the conversion is going to happen or not a potential share is a share which has a potential to become equity share whether it is legally permissible to be converted in the current year or not is irrelevant into the number of ordinary shares as set out below so you have multiple ordinary shares so if the conversion happens on 30th june this is 135 If it happens on 30th June 17, it is 130, 125, or 120 as the case may be. So there are different dates which are given. If the loan stock are not converted by 2019, then they would be redeemed at par. So basically, it's an optionally convertible instrument. Again, let us read. On 30th June, the share capital consisted of 15 lakh ordinary shares. This will go for basic cap EPS calculation. And on 1st of October 2011, the date of issue is. Not the start of the year. On first October eleven, the entity issued rupees twelve lakh fifty of eight percent loan for cash at par. Okay, par is hundred hundred nominal value or par value of the loan stock may be converted at any time between two thousand sixteen and nineteen into the number of shares. So first of all, you will have to find the number of bonds. The number of bonds over here would be. Rupees twelve lakh fifty upon rupees hundred, which means I guess this comes to twelve thousand five hundred bonds, and each of these twelve thousand five hundred bonds can get converted into any of these. What should you take? Well, in the diluted EPS calculation, you will take the conversion which results in the maximum possible dilution, which is one thirty five, and as a result, while calculating potential equity shares. your potential equity shares would be based on the number which results in the maximum dilution so 12500 bonds maximum will get converted into 130 135 uh, shares so this is 12500 into 135 which will come to 
सिक्सटीन लैख एटी सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड ओके अच्छा देन यू हैव ऑन थर्टी एथ जून सेवनटीन एटीन नाइनटीन दैट डज नॉट रियली मैटर इफ द लोन स्टॉक इज नॉट कन्वर्टेड बाई ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन दे वुड बी रिडीम डेट पार्ट ठीक है ना ओवर हियर इफ यू गो टू सी दीज दीज बॉन्ड्स आर सेटल्ड इन ओन एक्विटी इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स फॉर अ वेरिएबल नंबर ऑफ ओन एक्विटी इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स एंड हेंस दिस अपियर्स टू बी अ फाइनेंशियल लाइबिलिटी हाव एवर वन ऑफ द एक्सेप्शन इफ यू रिमेंबर वॉज इफ द वेरिएबिलिटी इज एट्रीब्यूटेबल टू टाइम देन यू कैन इग्नोर दैट एंड यू कैन टेक इट एज एक्विटी एज वेल सो ओवर हियर दैट इज वाई द रिमेनिंग पार्ट दे जस्ट ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन यू कि यहाँ पे लाइबिलिटी भी हो सकता था बिकॉज इट इज वेरिएबल हाव एवर इट कैन ऑल्सो बी एक्विटी बिकॉज द वेरिएबिलिटी इज लिंक टू टाइम ओनली दे वॉन्ट यू टू इग्नोर द डिटेल एप्लीकेशन ऑफ इंडेस वन जीरो नाइन दे वॉन्ट यू टू सॉल्व सिंप्लिस्टिकली एंड हेन्स द नेक्स्ट पैराग्राफ इज गिवन देर आर टू डिफरेंट वेज ऑफ एसेसिंग दीज इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स अंडर इंडेस थर्टी टू दैट इज फाइनेंशियल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स दैट इज अ कन्वर्जन ऑप्शन टू कन्वर्ट द नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स टू कन्वर्ट टू नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स विच वेरीज ओनली विद टाइम could be viewed either as an option to convert to a variable number of shares or a fixed number of shares ideally it should be treated as an exception and treated as equity and recognized either as a liability or equity though strictly speaking this should be an equity because the variability is linked only to time if there are other factors as well then you can treat liability as well this question assumes that the return equity conversion option return means you have given that option is accounted for as a derivative liability sir could it be an equity yes and hence the institute has given you this para where it has said that well we know that it can be a liability or this can be an equity however let's say if there are other factors based on the facts it can also be treated as a liability but we want to treat it as a liability so the question assumes that we treat it as a liability and if you treat it as a derivative it's a derivative so if you treat it as a liability then it is going to be accounted for under fedpl and if it is fedpl then the fair value gain or loss on this option element will be recorded in the pnl and mark to market through the profit and loss okay so that is fedpl basically the change in the options fair value reported in the year 2012 and 2013 is losses of 2500 and 2650 respectively this is what the institute wanted i'll just give you some background and hence it explained to you that we know that this can be liability or this can be equity but we are treating it as liability because if you treat it as equity then fetpl nahi hota then the value will be at the value at initial recognition if you want to treat it as a liability that is when this fair value gain or losses will appear and if these gains or losses will appear this will appear in the periods when these instruments are not yet converted however if you assume that they are converted yes you will save interest you will not have to pay interest but if these instruments are converted and they become actual equity shares then they are no longer a derivative financial liability in which case is fair value loss or gain also will not happen and this is the adjustment they want to test and hence they say you assume it to be a liability let us make peace with that and let us assume it is a liability as given in the question it is assumed that there are no tax consequences arising from these losses another problem now unless given otherwise we will assume that every expense is allowed as a deduction for income tax and every income is charged as an income in income tax unless it is otherwise given here it is otherwise given which means if there's a loss you don't get a deduction for that in income tax and hence uh, for calculating tax it has to be ignored the profit before interest fair value movements and taxation so this is the profit before interest before fair value movements and before taxation For the year ended 30th June 2012 and 2013 amounted to 8 lakh 25 and 8 lakh 95 thousand respectively. So this is given to you specifically. Acha and relate wholly to continuing operations. The rate of tax for both the periods is 33 percent. Calculate the basic and diluted EPS. Definitely you have to pause the video and read this question again, please. Acha, I hope you would have at least got a chance to read this again. first things first we'll have to find the basic eps sir basic eps divided by shares directly no you can't do that here the conversion has not happened either in 2012 or 13 the conversion has not happened uh, so this is let's say 2012 this is 1st july 
2012 the question clearly tells you like uh, right at the end it says that the profits for the year ended june 2012 so this is year ended june and then there is 2013 where this is first july 2012 to 30th June 2013 to start with we will take to start with we will take the profits before interest fair value changes and tax I'm just writing this in short which is given to you in the question which is 8 like 25 and 8 like 95 Achha, for basic EPS you have to find the profit available to the shareholders and this has to be after deducting all the other expenses like interest has to be deducted yes fair value losses have to be deducted yes and tax has to be de deducted well yes however you have to chronology you have to understand the sequence because interest ideally you would deduct interest then you would deduct fair value changes and then whatever profit you have you will calculate tax but that is wrong because the question clearly tells you that the fair value changes have no tax consequences so if you deduct interest find a number then deduct fair value changes find a number and uske up tax lagao which means implicit you are also calculating tax on the fair value changes which has been specifically said that that is not the case and hence you will have less interest Achha, if you calculate interest this is interest on rupees 12 lakh 50 okay what is the coupon rate on 12 lakh 50 i guess the coupon rate is given to you as 8 percent so this is 12 lakh 50 into 8 percent however this is for a period of nine months because the bond was issued itself on 1st october so this is the interest on 1st of october to 30th june so this is into 9 by 12 so over here this will be 12 lakh 50 into 8 percent into 9 by 12 which is 75,000. The interest over here is 75,000. The working over here will remain the same. You take 12 lakh 50 into 8 percent, but now the bond will be outstanding for the entire 12 months. So this is into 12 by 12. So this is 1 lakh rupees, I guess. Typically, you would have subtracted fair value losses over here and then calculated the tax, provided fair value losses had tax consequences. Here, they don't. And hence, this will give you the profit before tax and before fair value changes as well, which is 7 lakh 50 which is 7,95,000. From this, you will subtract tax at the rate of, are you given the tax rate? You will subtract tax at the rate of, uh, 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 33%. Last or second last line of the question is given 33%. And hence, you will get the profits, basically, at the rate. 67 percent so you can directly calculate that as well so this is 7 lakh 50 into 67 percent this is 5 lakh 2500 and 795 into 67 percent this is 532 650 Ajah, this is still not a profit available to shareholder because there are fair value losses on a liability on a liability and as a result this will be fair value losses the fair value losses given in the question is 2500 for the first year and 2650 for the second year. We deducted it here because they don't have tax consequences and hence the profit for equity shareholders gives you 5 lakh. Okay, round number and this is 5 lakh 30,000. Exam mein ye iska alagi swag hota hai. If you get such round numbers, you feel supremely confident. You assume that your answer is definitely right, which in this case it is. Divide this by the weighted average number of equity shares. You have to be alert to see whether these any of the potential shares have been converted out of that 12,500 shares. The answer is no. During 12 and 13, nothing have been converted and there are no fresh issues, which means the shares, which were I think 15 lakhs at the beginning, uh, will be there as outstanding for the entire period. So this is 15 lakhs, first line of the question. And that will finally give you the basic EPS. Achha, which is, let's say, 0 0.33, I guess, 5 divided by 15, and 5 lakh 30 divided by 15, 
which is point three five three three and this is point three 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 three. Okay, so this takes care of the basic EPS. Now, what about the diluted EPS? Over here, if I were to calculate the diluted EPS, I'll have to find the profit. Assuming conversion happens. Achha, when will you assume conversion happens? Well, the conversion can happen from the start of the year or the date when these instruments are issued, whichever is later. You can't assume a conversion from 1st of July 11 because these bonds were not even in existence on 1st of July 2011. So these bonds were actually issued only on 1st October 11. So the earliest date they can be converted is 1st of October 11. So over here we can try to find a weighted average number of equity shares as well as the numerator. So you will start with the profit which was taken as a base for the basic EPS calculation. So for the basic EPS calculation the profit was 5,2500 and it was sorry it was 5 lakhs and our favorite round number and 5,30,000. If you converted these instruments, then what will be the impact? Well, if you converted these instruments, interest will not be paid. Achha, but interest will also have a tax impact. How much is the interest? Well, we have already calculated this. This is 75,000. And hence, 75,000 is also for 9 months because the instrument were in existence for 9 months only. So the interest will not be paid but if interest is not paid the profits will increase and if the profits will increase the tax will also increase so your saving is the net of tax saving over here this is 75,000 into 1 minus 0.333 and this is 1 lakh into 1 minus 0.333 so over here you will have 75,000 into 0.67 which is 50,250 you will add back 50,250 and this is 1 lakh into so this is 67,000 is that it well if the instrument was converted at the very first instant in which case there would be no interest undoubtedly but now this instrument would become equity and if it becomes equity then there will be no fair value gain or loss also and hence you will also reverse the fair value loss Ajay, sir, kya lagya? Tax bhi reverse kar deta. this fair value loss had no tax impact and hence you can't adjust tax separately on this so you will have to add back 2500 and you will add back 2650 and hence achha, kya no, no. even if the instrument was converted a part of this tax would still be payable in fact maybe slightly more tax because of uh, uh, the interest or preference dividend so we will continue to account that however the tax saving on interest will be reversed but there will be no separate reversal for the tax saving or so of the loss because you did not consider that while calculating tax so when you reverse it as well the tax impact will not be considered so this will be the profit which is to be considered for the diluted eps calculation this is the profit for diluted eps calculation so this is 5 lakhs plus 50,250 plus 2,500 so this is 552 750 Achha, you will divide this by the weighted average number of equity shares and the weighted average number of equity shares would be 15 lakh shares which were outstanding for the entire 12 months however there are certain potential shares Achha, kitne potential shares well you have 12,500 bonds which can convert into 135 potential shares and this is outstanding for 9 months sir how did you get 9 well these bonds were issued on 1st of October 11 and are outstanding till 30th of June and hence you will take that as a base so over here this is 12,500 into 135 which is 16,87,500 and this 16,87,500 into 9 by 12 so this is probably uh, 12,65,625 so let us say we take that as a working here so this is 12 lakh 65,000 625 and hence your total veins for this working your total weighted average number of equity shares for this working will be probably 27 lakh 65,000 
सिक्स ट्वेंटी फाइव अच्छा सो दिस इज फाइव फिफ्टी टू अपॉन ट्वेल्व सॉरी ट्वेंटी सेवन सिक्सटी फाइव सिक्स ट्वेंटी फाइव विल गिव यू डायल्यूटेड ई पी एस सो दिस विल बी डायल्यूटेड ई पी एस ऑफ हाउ मच आर वी गेटिंग पॉइंट वन नाइन नाइन एट और लेटस से वी कैन से पॉइंट टू जीरो अच्छा इज इट लोअर देन द बेसिक ई पी एस वेल यस द बेसिक ई पी एस इज पॉइंट थ्री दिस इज लोअर देन दैट एंड हेंस इट इज डायल्यूटेड यू डोंट हैव टू गिव दिस जस्टिफिकेशन द जस्टिफिकेशन इज गिवन ओनली इफ इट इज एंटी डायल्यूटेड ऑन सिमिलर लाइन्स यू लैव फाइव लैक थर्टी प्लस सिक्सटी सेवन प्लस टू सिक्स फाइव जीरो सो दिस इज फाइव नाइन्टी नाइन दिस इज फाइव लैक नाइन्टी नाइन थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी ऑन विच यू विल एड द वेटेड एवरेज नंबर ऑफ एक्विटीशियज विच विल बी फिफ्टीन लैक्स इन टू ट्वेल्व बाई ट्वेल्व प्लस अगेन यू विल हैव ट्वेल्व थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इन टू वन थर्टी फाइव बट दिस इज गोइंग टू बी मल्टीप्लाइड बाई ट्वेल्व बाई ट्वेल्व नो लॉन्गर नाइन बाई ट्वेल्व बिकॉज दीज आर पोटेंशियल फॉर द एंटायर ईयर एंड हेंस यू विल एड सिक्सटीन लैख एटी सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड ओवर हियर एंड हेंस योर टोटल कम्स टू सिक्सटीन एटी सेवन फाइव हंड्रेड प्लस फिफ्टीन लैक्स विच विल कम टू थर्टी वन लैख एटी सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड थर्टी वन एटी सेवन फाइव हंड्रेड एंड हेंस योर डायल्यूटेड ई पी एस वुड बी पॉइंट वन एट एट और पॉइंट वन नाइन एज अ केस मे बी नाउ दिस इज अगेन लोअर देन पॉइंट थ्री फाइव एंड हेंस दिस कैन बी एक्सेप्टेड एज अ डायल्यूटेड ई पी एस now this is a fairly interesting and a complex question we have also given the notes etc attached you have this adjustment of the tax adjustment on fair value losses you have this adjustment where you have to have multiple uh, uh, multiple conversion ratios you have to select uh, a particular conversion ratio question number 11 was a question where conversion had happened during the year question number 14 is a question where new bonds are issued during the year and as a result a lot of good adjustments are there over here you will definitely mark it as important just an extra point for your reference this has not come but just as an extra point let us say you were asked to calculate the eps for the year 2018 if you are in the year 2018 then you can't still continue to show 135 because if you are in the year 2018 it is impossible to get 135 shares it is probably even impossible to get 130 shares because you are in the year 2018 and the chances to get them have gone so you have two options you can either get 125 shares or you can get 120 shares in which case you will probably take 125 as the base so if the conversion had happened on the very first day of the year uh, then aapko kitne shares milte the uh, maybe 130 125 120 jo bhi rehta you will take you will not take 135 in such case theek hai so this is just as an extra understanding अच्छा सो दिस टेक्स केयर ऑफ क्वेश्चन नंबर क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन